Hello and welcome to the first video in our cyber security series. My name's Kevin Large and I'll be your instructor for today's session. What we're going to do today simply is we're going to make sure that we can install Kali Linux in VirtualBox. So the very first thing that we need to do is of course obtain Kali Linux. So I'm going to type into Google Kali Linux download take us to the official Kali Linux download site. And here we can see many many different versions of Kali Linux. Um, these would be ISO images that we could burn to for instance a DVD and uh, we could actually boot the system off of there or possibly even a USB stick. Uh, we've got 64-bit versions, 32-bit versions, lightweight versions. There's a version here for the ARM processor, the Advanced Risk Machine Processor. Um, there are different versions with different desktop managers LXDE, MATE, KDE, XFCE, that's a particularly nice one. What we're going to look for is we're actually going to look for the virtual box images. The virtual box images are available over with those lovely chaps at the Offensive Security VM download page. So I'm going to follow the link to the Offensive Security VM download page and we'll see what we can find. Now these images will have a default password of Tor, so a default user of root and the password of Tor. We've got our VMware images and a little bit further down we can find our VirtualBox images. So if you've installed the Oracle VirtualBox virtual machine software which is uh, a free download, uh, will run on Linux, Windows, Macintosh, wonderful piece of software, these are the images that you need to use. Where are we? There we go. So uh, Kali Linux VirtualBox images. Now uh, I'm going to be using a 64-bit processor. Um, this is Kali Linux version 2019.3. It's a 3.4 gig download. It's quite a big download. Um, you'll notice that we have a SHA-256 sum hash here. So we can check the integrity of our downloaded file. Very important thing to do if you're downloading an operating system. So what I would now do is I would click on that link and simply download the file. However, in time-honoured fashion, I've already done that to save some time, so rather than uh, wait for a 3.4 gigabyte file to download, here it is, pre-downloaded. Uh, what we can do, we can do a quick check of that uh, SHA-256 sum. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to right-click in my file manager. Obviously I'm on a Linux machine here. I'm actually using Manjaro Linux. And I'm going to open up the terminal. And in there I'm going to type ls-l, get a nice long listing. You can see a Kali Linux OVA. It comes across as an OVA file, so this can be opened, uh, imported directly into VirtualBox. Um, that's actually measuring the size in block size, so what we'll do is we'll use Thor, nice easy one to remember. And what Thor will do is it will give us it, in, among other things, in human readable format. So there's a 3.4 gig download. Um, I can also type file, and file will tell me what it is. So it comes up as a POSIX TAR archive. It's actually an OVA for VirtualBox. Um, and now what we'll do is we'll do a SHA-256 sum to check the integrity of this download. This is quite computationally intensive. Um, so even though this computer's actually got a Intel i7 Extreme processor, 6 core, with hyperthreading, that's 12 cores, 32 gig of RAM and two 500 gig SSD drives, so it's not exactly a slow machine. It did take a bit of processing. And we can see here that we have a hash. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to compare that hash against the one that's on the Offensive Security Downloads page. So, in other words, this one here. I'll copy that, in fact. And what we'll do is We'll simply paste it underneath the other one. Okay, so there's one. I'll hit the Control C key and I'll take a copy of this one, which is the one we computed. Paste that underneath, and it's simply a matter of checking to make sure they are absolutely 100% identical. If they are identical, it means that your download has come over completely safely and securely not corrupted in any way shape or form so there's an integrity check for a download excellent okay so we 
can be pretty safe in the assumption that that's a good download. Um, now what we can do now is I could actually probably right click on that and open it with Oracle VirtualBox but um, I'll show you the other way as well which is uh, go into Oracle VirtualBox go to file go to import appliance and then it's just simply a matter of finding that particular file uh, which is a good question I'm just trying to remember where exactly I put that file now I think I put it in downloads didn't I downloads ISO images there it is Kali Linux 2019 3 a VBox AMD 64 64-bit AMD or Intel processor OVA file we'll open that click on next and we don't really want to change any of these settings um, we can leave the settings pretty much as they are uh, I can see that they've given it 2 gig of RAM so you might have to be careful if you're running on a system with very little RAM in it but there's plenty of RAM on this machine so we should be good to go so you can change these settings if you wish to but be careful what you're doing I would only change the RAM I notice they've given it two processors as well which is nice um, let's see do we want to change any MAC addresses we'll generate new MAC addresses for all the network adapters it's normally a good idea to do that okay and then we'll click on import now this is unusual when we're importing an OVA file into um, Oracle VirtualBox it seems as though it's going to take an awfully long time but then all of a sudden it goes really really fast and takes hardly any time at all <laughs> obviously this sort of job is um, much much faster if you've got fast SSD drives in the system um, I'm using two Samsung Evo 850 SSD drives and uh, they are extremely quick so that does actually help in doing a job like importing the uh, virtual disk image okay we're nearly there um, another thing it sometimes does is it sits on 99% for an unbelievably long time in comparison to how long it's taken to do the rest of the import done so now we don't need to worry about going through an install we've literally just imported a pre-built version of Kali Linux straight into the system and those nice guys at offensive security they've built this for us and in the description we can see that we've got the username of root the password of Tor it's using a US keyboard layout but that's not a problem um, so we'll give it a go and see if it starts and it doesn't implementation of the USB 2 controller not found because the USB 2 controller site was part of the VM cannot be started to fix this problem install Oracle VirtualBox extension pack or disable the USB 2 support in VM settings okay I don't have the extension pack installed in my VirtualBox here so um, rather than do that just to speed things up let's see if it will actually start if I just say use a USB 1 controller that is going I think yep that's going it started okay what I would do is it's a lot it's useful having a USB 2 controller set up um, USB 2 is much faster than USB 1 so what I would do is I would actually go off and install the virtual box extension pack which would allow me to have the USB 2 controller but um, that was a quick way of getting around a potential problem so if you ever see that problem just have a little look at the description see what it's telling you to do and you should be able to fix it fairly easy so we're going to root the password of Tor and we should be good to go You'll notice that the guest editions has been installed on this automatically for us so as we can resize the screen and look at that there is your Oracle VirtualBox running the only thing I do need to fix is I need to install a VirtualBox extension pack so as I can make use of the USB 2 controller but for the moment I'll just run it with the USB 1 controller selected and that should give me a fully working system
3 minus M is my memory utilization, DF minus H, uh, the um, utilization in the um, file system. Uh, let's have a look. Who am I? You are logged in as root, IPA. Let's have a look at my IP address. Ah, now look at that. 10.0.2.15. They've actually set this up using NAT. Now I would recommend you don't use NAT. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually um, shut this down. We'll power it off. And I'm going to take the network controller and tell it not to use NAT. Tell it instead to bridge it to my network interface card on my host system. On the laptop that's running VirtualBox. This is the wired network in interface card that connects me to the internet. So I will bridge it to that. And that way it will show up as a real system on my network. Okay, we'll start it back up again and see what it's got to say. Kali Linux by Offensive Security, it is without a shadow of doubt one of the finest security distributions going and anybody who wants to get into network security, cyber security, they need to know how to run Kali Linux. Do a root, do a tour, and we're up and going. And now what we should have is we should have a proper IP address on the system now because it will have gone off to my router which is running DHCP, Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, which will have handed out an IP address on my network. Um, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to change your preferences and make that font size just a little bit bigger so as we can see what's going on a little bit easier. There we go. So IP, in fact IPL will show you the layer 2 data link layer information basically your MAC addresses and the fact that your interface is up um, so I've got an Ethernet interface and a lookback interface if I do an IPA instead it will give me my layer 3 information in other words the IP address and there you go I do have a proper IP address now my wireless network at home is 192.168.50 and it's given this machine dot seven six excellent that means effectively I probably can now browse to the web um, let's have a little look. Boom, 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 boom. Whoa, look at all this like, information, vulnerability, web apps, wireless reversing. So much useful stuff. Okay, I don't know why it's doing that. It's uh, it's made a bit of a mess of those icons, I must admit. Let's try that again. I think what I do need to do is I need to install the VirtualBox extension pack because I think that will also help. So Chromium web browser. Oop, Etacap. Well, Etacap's fun, but I don't really want to run Etacap right now. Um, i tell you what, let's do it from up here. Usual applications. Internet. Chromium web browser. Okay. So of course we're running in a virtual machine, so it's not going to be quite as fast as if we were running it natively. However, that said, the nice thing with a virtual machine is if you break a virtual machine, it's not really a great deal of a problem. Um, you can normally fix it without too much of an issue. Okay. Doesn't look like it likes Chromium there, does it? Let's try Firefox. Oh yeah, Firefox is fine. Okay. I have noticed this sometimes with Linux. Chromium can be a little bit uh, finicky, but uh, Firefox looks like it's working absolutely fine. BBC News quick way of testing to make sure it's working properly. Yeah, all looks good. All looks good. That's working then. Okay, so that's how we install Kali Linux in VirtualBox making use of a OVA file which is a pre-built VirtualBox image. I hope you found that useful and pop back for our next installation of cybersecurity videos.
I'll shut this down and I'll sign out for now. Many thanks.